Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are losing their way. In their case, the gods of this world have blinded their minds to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain to be apart and by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. One of my favourite prayers comes from Michael Lunig. He writes, Lead me into the darkness that I may find what lies concealed, that I may confess it toward the light. I think one of the reasons that uh, that particular prayer, that thought, that idea is one of my favourites is because of my ongoing struggle with clinical depression. Depression is often referred to as being in the dark and the process of coming out of a depressed state is frequently compared to coming into the light. That makes it sound like a one-off event, however. The truth is that it is nothing like that. It is a long, hard, dark road with the occasional street light, if you like, that gives some hope on the way. But interestingly, interestingly, I find that's similar to the way some people have described their journey of faith. Like little figures of light along the way that give some hope. Today is Transfiguration Sunday and here's an icon from our Greek and Russian Orthodox brothers and sisters that uh, I invite you to have a look at. Jesus standing at the top of the mountain, bathed in a light that comes from within, not without. The icon depicts him standing with two others, while the disciples down the bottom 
suffering severe foot and mouth disease once again, fall away, tumbling over themselves and each other down the mountain. It's an image that because we know this story, it uh, comes to light for us. It's a story that we all think, oh yes, we know the story of the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. And there's the disciples not really understanding what's going on. I came across another image. My image of the transfiguration is a little different. Again, in this image, there is a figure that stands at the top of a mountain perhaps. But instead of two others alone sharing the spotlight, there are others who also are sharing the light. Can you notice in the image that there is more than one face reflecting? It's an image that uh, there is a light that emanates out of the beginning, out of the middle of it, in the darkness that illuminates those around and they catch a little of the light. I invite you to see that uh, as this figure stands in the middle and those around begin to catch a little of the light, to think about those who are held in the grips of conditions like depression or many other things that help people or cause people to feel unloved and unlovable. To see them gather there around on that mountain scene, facing towards the beacon that is Christ. But everyone, even those who stand at the top of the mountain, sometimes take a step back into uncertainty. I wonder if any of those on that mountain with Christ can honestly say there hasn't been a single time where they haven't doubted, where they haven't questioned or wondered about their faith. I know that I stand in the crowd of uncertainty. There are days when my depression lessens and I hope that I'm on my way up that mountain to bathe in the light of Christ. But then something happens. Something happens that makes me doubt God's goodness an anniversary of an event that still breaks my heart, which makes me ask once more, why? Sometimes it's a new event, usually something catastrophic, which leads me to wonder if God is really a God of love and mercy. And at those times, I find myself sinking back into the dank, dark pit of my own feelings of worthlessness, uselessness or hopelessness that would have me believe that I'm simply not good enough to be part of that scene and like in that image, retract back into the dark. What's the point? Like the incessant cry of a child, why, why? That's the question I often ask. What is the point of prayer? What do we get from singing songs in worship? What benefit is there in turning up to church every week? What is there from occasionally eating a morsel of bread and having a sip of water or wine? Of being with people that sometimes feel like strangers to us? What's the point of believing that a Jewish peasant born some 2,000 years ago actually gives a toss about what we think or do or say, be it in the church or outside it? What's the point of pretending the world would be a better place if only people would believe in God and act in the way that God supposedly would have us act? With grace, with mercy, with love. Sometimes, Sometimes when the road is really dark, with no light in range, 
I want to give up what seems to be the hopeless quest of being more Christ-like. I struggle to pray and I begin to think that there is no point of believing in anything at all. I can't do it. I don't have it in me. I'm much in the grip of the black dog of depression. Why would God want someone like me? And then, then I talk with someone who sees things in a different way. Someone who may not know the depths of depression but has a sense of the darkness that's all about and holds out the promise of light in a new way. Someone who reminds me that Christ is holding out his scarred hands to lift me from the pit and that he and they too are there to hold and care for me when I cannot hold or care for myself. And I begin to listen to the silence I surround myself with and find it isn't so silent after all. I sometimes hear a tiny, sometimes very tiny voice. It would be so easy to ignore if it wasn't so insistent. A voice that tells me, I am loved, I am wanted, I am needed. A friend once said to me that there is nothing in this world that doesn't run to some kind of cycle, be it life, be it the weather, be it faith or anything else you care to name. We all have times when we believe in God and times when we doubt or even reject that belief totally. There are times when we are happy and there are sad times. But we know somehow in the depths of our being that those happy or better times will return. Yes, there are times when the darkness is completely overwhelming and we can only hope that there is some little light somewhere ahead up in the end, at the end of the tunnel. Light, which I hasten to add, is not an oncoming train, even though it might feel like it. There is some light at the end, a day of promise, a light of hope. Not so much that my suffering or struggles will end, but more that one day I will see the point of it all. One day I will be one of those who reach out my hands with Christ to hold another in their pain and suffering. A day that over the next few weeks of time will be lost in the darkness of Lent and the crucifixion to come. But then, and only after passing through those dark times, comes another day in which light will shine with more power than ever before. But for now, for now I'm happy enough to be one of those who has doubts, questions and fears. But I'm also happy to be one of those who stands alongside, shoulder to shoulder with all others who have the same or different doubts, questions and fears. I stand alongside you that we might turn together our backs on the darkness at the bottom of the mountain and strive to reach the goal of standing with Christ in the light of love, caring and grace. Lead us into the darkness that we may find what lies concealed, that we may confess it toward the light. Amen.